Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got a knife by Rake today. This is the P128SF. You can also get it in the SB, which is just all satin. I really like black stone wash, and the entire knife in that color is done very well on this knife. This is a, you know, it's a budget price knife. Uh, $65 Canadian, that's around $50 US. It's a flipper. Frame lock, uh, right side pocket clip, nice high saber grind. I'm almost tempted to call this a full flat grind, but it does have a small flat section right up there uh, where they've got the label for the model and the label for the brand. Nice and small, I like that. Uh, steel, stainless steel handle, 14C28N Sandvik steel blade. Action is very good due to the nice bearings on here and it feels good in the hand. So that's the entire summary, and I gave you the summary first for crying out loud, what's up with that? If you want more of the details, stick around for the full review coming at you right now. Very, very comfortable knife in hand. Due to you've got a nice swell back here and a nice sort of rounded body here. It has a look that I think some people might not appreciate as much as others, uh, you know, with this rounded look here. But you do have, you know, this nice big chamfer here and a nice big chamfer back there. Gives it some thing to grab your attention. Lanyard hole right there. You've got your uh, show side has no screw heads that you can see. And the screw heads are all on the other side here. Torx and uh, Torx screws for the uh, pocket clip as well. So that lanyard hole is in a bit of an odd spot right there. It, they'd have to change the handle shape or the blade shape uh, in order to put that lanyard anywhere else because uh, the blade just sort of skims across the edge here everywhere else. So they'd have to reconstruct it, maybe put, maybe swap this hole in that screw, swap those two spots around, that might do it. I'd rather have the lanyard hole further back, to be honest with you. It's an odd spot right there. But I don't use lanyards, and so maybe somebody who uses lanyards might have a stronger opinion than mine. Um, so there's that side, and a nice pivot screw there. Nice uh, decorative effect, just the way it's designed. It's very common design on the rake knives. And uh, the uh, frame lock arm here. It's also chamfered the same way on this side. You got that big chamfer there and a big chamfer here. And uh, one thing I do like, and I really like it a lot. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. This chamfer right here on the frame lock arm, most knives don't have a cutout like that. They just sort of leave it like it is back here. They just leave the side of the frame lock coming up. And that's really nice because when you have it in your hand, your finger wants to curve in there. So that's that little cutout makes it very comfortable, either left or right-handed. It just makes it that much more comfortable to hold the knife. And so that's a really good thing right there. And of course, they've got it on the other side, which is common on the show side. It's just not so common on the uh, frame lock side. So good job there. Uh, nicely chamfered all around. Uh, good stone black stone wash finish on the handle and on the blade. We have a... Um, uh, what do they call this? A beta plus lock. That's a lock so that when the blade's deployed, you can move that forward. And now you can't deploy the uh, frame lock arm, the frame lock to undo the knife. I'm not too fond of these. Uh, I think they're re a redundancy that's not necessary. And I've don't know why I didn't figure this out any sooner. There's another issue with these, and that's that they force the frame lock arm to go in further. This is the least early lockup possible. You can't have an earlier lockup than it is right now. And the inside edge here is right about in the middle of the uh, tang of the blade right there. And uh, you just can't do any less than that because of this little locking system. So if that wasn't there, you could have it lock up, you know, just a quarter of the way. Talking about the lockup, lockup is solid. There's no blade play side to side. 
No blade play up or down that way. Very good lockup. The interface is nice and smooth. Uh, you can see that shiny interface right there. That's the surface that the uh, lock arm comes travels across. And it's a nice and smooth, gradual interface. Very well done. There's your flipper tab. And it works quite well for light switch mode where you just pull back and it flips open. That's with my left hand. Uh, pushing down doesn't work that well because you've got that on an angle, but you can sort of do it and then get it to go. But you do need a little bit of uh, directionality with your finger pulling it back a bit. Otherwise, you're just not going to get it to open. And then in the right hand, it works even better. Um, simply because I'm a little bit better with knives with my right hand than my left, even though I'm left-handed. Kind of weird. So pivot's great, lockup's great. Uh, handle shape is very good for comfort. Uh, handle shape is very good for locking in place so that if you did end up stabbing into something and then your blade stops suddenly, your handle's not going to uh, let your hand come up and over it and into the blade. So that's a really good thing right there. There's no jimping anywhere except for on the release arm here on the frame lock to uh, release that lock. Everything else is nice and smooth. We've got a nice big backspacer. And I'm surprised that that backspacer fits as well as it does because they didn't go and, um, you know, grind this surface smooth where the, the frame and that uh, spacer were together and then they ground it if they would have you would have a you know a shiny finish on the end of the handle uh, instead they made it to fit very very well and when you do a good design uh, and you mass produce something if you go to high tolerances you can do that no problem and so that's just i believe g10 in there um, and it just fits very very well a lot of guys don't like backspacers because they say then the knife is hard to clean I am totally in disagreement with that. I think uh, backspacer knives are easier to clean because you can just take a cotton swab and just swipe in there and it's clean. You don't have to work around a pillar on an open pillar construction and get, you know, 360 degrees all the way around that thing. So I think this is easier to clean. Um, it might need to be cleaned a little more often because you can get stuff stuck inside there, but most of us live in an urban environment and we don't get our knives that dirty, at least not that easily. So you've got your blade. I mean, on the blade there, you've got the uh, rake name. I really like it when the uh, knife is not over emblazoned on the side with all kinds of words. And there's a little date stamp. It was, uh, this knife was made in uh, July last year. 14 c 28 and it says right there uh, the model and the serial number is right there by the way the warranty uh when you buy this from uh, rakeknives.ca that's uh, rake canada uh, that's who uh, supplied this knife to me at a significant discount but i did have to pay for it and i got a good discount uh 15 days return policy on it no problem. And then they've got a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, the first five years, everything's covered. And the rest of the lifetime, labor is covered. Parts are extra. And uh, that's a good warranty, I think, for a knife, especially a knife this price. Not bad at all. I've uh, gone and sharpened the edge on this a little bit. And uh, it looks really good. And it's quite nice and sharp, I think. Got a little bit of paper here. You can just hear how smooth that is. In a push cut, I'm trying to stay in the same spot all the way through. And uh, it just cuts very, very well. 14C28N is an awesome steel for that. I've got some cardboard here. This is, you know, double layer cardboard. And it just flies through it like nobody's business. And I've talked in other videos about why I sharpen my knives, usually before I do reviews, uh, in a nutshell, the way it is from the factory is just a tiny, tiny little bit of the life of the knife. I'd much rather know how well the knife performs when it's sharpened properly, because that's how it's going to be 95% of the time. 
really, really good steel. This 14C28N, it's one of the best steels for low cost knives that you can get, in my opinion, if you're looking for a stainless steel blade, that is. Let's give you all the dimensions of this thing. We'll just zoom in a little bit more. Okay, the cutting edge is 9.7 centimeters. That's 3.83 inches. The blade length is a little bit less because of how far the handle comes out here. So blade length, so the end of the handle to the tip, 9.15 centimeters, 3.6 inches. The thickness of the steel, 3.5 millimeters. That's 0.1375 inches. The blade depth is 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, and I'm generally about an inch up from the end where the sharpness trial is. That's about two and a half centimeters, roughly. 0.4 millimeters, which is 0 0.0157 inches. Awesome, awesome. Nice and thin behind the grind. And then you've got a nice gradual bevel here. This thing is an awesome slicing knife. Uh, no thumb stud here to get in the way. You can slice stuff through there all day long. The handle. Handle length is 12.5 centimeters, 4.92 inches. So basically five inch handle, three and a half inch knife. That's an eight and a half inch blade, uh, eight and a half inch total. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Grip area, the grip area is back here, is 10 centimeters, 3.94 inches. The handle thickness, so not counting the pocket clip, is 1.2 centimeters. That's 0.472 inches, just under half an inch thick. The handle depth, and right about here is the biggest spot. So the handle depth right there is 2.88 centimeters, 1.13 inches. Now for the total length of this knife, from the tip of the blade to the tail of the handle here, 21.65 centimeters, 8.54 inches. So eight and a half inches of awesome. Really nice sharpness trail there. Nice plunge, and the Ricasso is done really well. And you've got this flat section coming up to there. So if you've got a sharpening system that you need to clamp on to a flat area, this will do it very well. Um, if you've got uh, another kind of system that you just lay the back spine against things, that works quite well. I really like this harpoon shape on the blade. And then you've got the swedge up here. Makes for a very strong tip on this knife, the way that's designed. How much does this thing weigh altogether? 157 grams, 5.55 ounces. Five and a half ounce knife, very, very good. I'm liking it an awful lot. How does it hang in your pocket? Well, it hangs in your pocket quite well. This pocket clip is in a good spot. I like that it's one of those fold over pocket clips. You've got, uh, how much of this is sticking out of your pocket? You've got about one centimeter, uh, just a little over one centimeter sticking out of your pocket, just under half of an inch. So in the pocket, it holds on very well. And uh, with blue jeans like this, it doesn't look like it's half an inch, that's for sure. And it's less than half an inch, most definitely. Uh, almost right or close to a centimeter. And you can just barely see it in your pocket if you get this black wash version. And you're wearing, you know, blue jeans or you're wearing maybe some dark colored pants or slacks. This uh, black stone wash color is very um, good for hiding. Not super reflective. It just sits in there very well. The pocket clip is only on the right side. Nothing available on the left side for you for that. Action is one of the best things about this. Let me show you the pictures of the inside. You can see the ball bearings and how everything looks in there. Okay, so hopefully that impressed you a little bit. How does this fit in the hand? Well, reverse grip works quite well. The angle of this little spot on the end there, you know, it's easy enough to get the thumb on there quite comfortably. Um, a reverse reverse even works, although it's not quite as comfortable. You know, your regular, you know, fist grip or saber grip works just fine. Your thumb on top for pushing works very well. Uh, don't get around the other side like this to do... Uh, some delicate knife cutting, del delicate knife cutting, delicate cutting. Uh, you'll probably cut the end of your finger. That's not a uh, forward choil for your hand. But you've got, you know, a reasonable distance from the cutting edge that you can do some delicate cutting that way. You can always do some pinch cutting. Some I like this stance for this specific knife. It's one of the reasons I like the harpoon shape because you can get your finger in there, in that 
raised to section and you've got a lot of control of your knife that way if you need to do some delicate cutting um, or for whatever reason. It's just a very comfortable knife to hold and carry and the weight is really nice. Um, I'm not too fond, like I said, of this Beta Plus lock and uh, I wouldn't mind if the pocket clip was both right and left. Being a left-handed guy, I wouldn't mind if it was on this side as well. That being said, it's easy enough to open and close with the left hand. I don't have a problem with it. And of course, with the right hand as well. And, you know, just a comfortable knife. Um, I've already talked about the warranty. Um, I like that the branding small talked about that. Um, I really, really love this nice full bevel here. Nice and flat grind on there. That makes it a great slicer. I can't say enough of that. That's a really really well done job a really good design the entire knife is belly it stays curved all the way even back to the end here um, I do like this backspacer I often like open pillar construction better but this backspacer just is very very nice on this knife eh, like I said before lanyard hole yeah not so much but that's the extent of my cons this extra beta plus lock and where the placement is of that lanyard hole. And those are very small things to dislike about this knife. Do you have any questions or comments for me? Please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Uh, you can buy these knives if you live in North America, directly from rakeknives.ca. As I said, it's about $54.95 Canadian which is just less than $50 US. Um, so that's pretty much all I want to say about this thing. Until next time, remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.